So, uh, what what brand are uh, oh, my, my shoes? Yeah. Uh, these are uh, these are some Clark's boots that I bought on Amazon because I thought they looked really sweet, and they ended up being the most comfortable shoes that I've ever had. So it was it was a good choice. Like the other dudes, I have like a constantly changing board. Um, obviously, just regular old cord, cord uh, pitch black tuner. Uh, this is a custom made uh, like green Russian muff clone. Um, I use it. I don't like. I, I only use it in like a couple parts in songs. Like I, I have like this one setting on it that I use in conjunction with this old DOD stereo chorus that I have to get the like typo negative like Peter Steele bass tone um, and then I use uh, I use the muff for a couple like I, I use it in the song that we have Devoid of Redemption pretty much for the whole song and then uh, a couple other parts here and there and then I have this uh, Earthquaker Devices Talons Overdrive it's just kind of a nice like a tube amp like uh, overdrive. It has a lot of dynamics to it, and I like it because you can actually change the like three band EQ that it has on there too. I generally set it like with not a lot of gain, or like you know, like I, I don't have it be like a super saturated drive. Just have something a little different, like dirty but not as dirty as my other stuff. Um, this is actually, for the most part, my all, like almost always on pedal. It's a, an old version of the Cattle and Bread SFT, which is basically like a, it's voiced to be like an old like Ampeg SVT, like a 70s era one, or a um, like V4 or V4, I guess. Um, it's supposed to be for bass or guitar, but it sounds great on bass. I've, I've been using it for uh, years now. Um, I, I, this is one thing that I would absolutely have to get again if I lost it. Like uh -huh. that's my main tone on on our most recent album. That's like the main thing that I use for the overdrive. Um, I just got this freeze pedal. Uh, I just uh, kind of use it for uh, never like during a song really. It'll be. Uh, kind of just segues between songs. Like when we're tuning, I'll like write the last note of the song, I'll engage it and then use all the modulation stuff that I have to kind of like morph whatever the note is. Um, this is some stuff that I like recently added kind of to augment the freeze, like I'm saying. I have this Cattle and Bread Bell Epic Tape Echo. Um, it's I can't remember what uh, it's. It's actually based off of a physical, uh, like actual, like big, like old, like tape machine style uh, delay. But I don't remember which one it is. It's a. Uh, it's got a really cool like like tape warble effect in there. And it's, it's not an analog pedal, but it sounds like really warm. Really good. It's something that would sound cool, like for like kind of like synthy parts or whatever. Uh, let's see. Next, we all got hooked up by Earthquaker with these awesome uh, afterneath reverb pedals. That's just kind of apparently they use like a uh, a series of super short delays to make like this like cavernous reverb sound. And uh, I only turn this pedal on if I have the freeze on. It's a uh, I mean, it's just kind of something to make a really like psychedelic like wash sound. And then uh, I've got the Dispatch Master, which uh, I don't know if the other dudes like talked about, but it's a uh, it's a delay and reverb pedal. I I turn the delay part off and turn the reverb up all the way, so it's just reverb. And uh, same sort of deal. Like sometimes like in our clean parts, I'll turn on the the reverb. Yeah, the chorus, just to add a little bit of color to the tone. So, I don't know. It's it's 
a fairly simple board. I really, I love back pedals, but I'm like really, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just generally like like to keep it pretty simple. Like I could even just have like, you know, the SFT in tuner and be okay. Like I, for the longest time I only ran like fuzz, overdrive, and that was it. Um, they're real thin and they're super flat. It's only been yeah, recently that I've kind of gotten yeah, back into like, like trying to add like, some other like modulation yeah, in there and stuff. Just, I, I don't know why. I just like I, I love effects and they they always sound awesome. But like I just I, I kind of like to keep it simple and like the more shit that I have, like something's gonna fuck up. And I just, you know, just like ah, it's, it's too much trouble. I'm just gonna like throw out all this other stuff and keep it, you know, like stuff that I know is gonna work. While I was a uh, or while we were on tour with the Ob over in Europe, Aaron from the Ob has a really awesome pedal board that I used a couple nights. And it kind of got me like back into like, being like oh, dude, I'm gonna start like making my board a little bit more complex again because I, I have like. You know, like three times as many pedals as this at home, just sitting around, and I just, I switch some of them out, like here and there. I, just, I don't know. I guess I, I don't like to experiment very much. I like know what I like and end up sticking with it just because it, it's simple and I don't have to worry about it sounding weird or anything. So. And who, I'm just curious, who built this? Uh, that, that was uh, made by our friend Chad that plays in the band Uzula. Um, he he made it. It's I, mean, I, I don't know. There's a, there's some sort of like magic in this pedal because he made another one for me that supposedly had all the same components. There was nothing different about it, and it just didn't sound the same. Like I, I like couldn't couldn't uh, like go with the other one over that one. But this actually uh, I just recently re-added this to my board. Like for the longest time, I was using a uh, Black Art Stoneworks Faro. But I let Devin borrow it because he had a pedal that messed up and uh, he needed a fuzz. And he's, he's had a fair on his board before, so he's like, here, dude, use this. I'll like, throw this back on my board again. I've been digging this a lot, though. It's, it's a pretty nice. Alright, so this is my beloved uh, Guild B301. It's made in 1978. My favorite bass that I've ever owned. I uh, I used to always use Fender P basses or like like P bass copies, but uh, I got this. I've been wanting one for years. I ended up trading this uh, Kramer aluminum neck bass that I had for this, and I just like fall in love with this thing. It's like it's like literally like maybe the ugliest bass like in terms of like just being so beat up and stuff. But like I've always loved like. You know, the body design of these, and like, it plays absolutely flawlessly. So I, it's super noisy. I, I'm constantly having to like battle to like, pretty much just has like P90 pickup in it. So like, it squeals. Like, if I take my hand away from the ceramic ball, it immediately feeds back. So I, I'm constantly having to like fight this thing, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, 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 I just posted online that I was wanting to like sell or trade my Kramer bass that I had because I didn't like playing it at all. And uh, I was going to see if somebody wanted to trade me like a Rickenbacker bass or a Guild. And, like I just put a, a list of things that I wanted and he was like, yeah, I've got a Guild, I'll, I'll trade with you straight up. So. Yeah, I've never seen a Guild bass before. It's like it's, new guitars. It is life. the greatest. Uh, I, I, I literally had one in one for years and years. Yeah, it's not easy to find. I had another one that I got not too long ago, but I ended up selling it uh, to like help finance some other stuff that we had going on. But it didn't play as well as this one. Like it, it just didn't have whatever magic this thing has in it. Like it was not as fun. It didn't feel as natural. It looked really awesome because it was like in pretty much like flawless shape compared to this. But it just I don't know. 
I'm, I don't miss it so, like, too much. And I play like really light gauge strings for how low we tune. This has a this has to Dario half rounds on it right now, which I love. They sound great on this bass. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just everything on this bass like comes together really well. And it plays great. Has awesome sustain. Even though I have to like fight with the like noisiness of the pickup. It's really good, so. uh, I have really bad luck with amps. Uh, I blew up my Fender 300 Pro not too long ago, like the output transformer blew up on it. And then uh, my old vintage acoustic 270 that I would normally use, like I've been having trouble with it on this tour. So I'm, I'm down to like using an amp that I literally only bought for recording one part on our album with. It's an old like PV Musician 400. Uh, it sounds really cool, but it's kind of, it's got too many like, controls on it that are that just kind of it's kind of a bummer to like get like EQ'd right so every show um, I I don't know same sort of deal I like to stick with something simple like just a loud clean bass amp through like a Ampeg SVT I've used that for years and years and I, I always know what it's gonna sound like just keep it I don't know I, I get I get more into like like guitar gear, I guess. Like my, my like bass setup is never anything like super crazy. I just like something that's like got a lot of like balls to it, and you know has has low end that I can feel on stage no matter where I am. It's kind of what I like. Yeah, I